A newly crowned 140 pound pilotist, Isak Cruz, said following his knockout of Rolando Romero that he would stay at 135 pounds for the right fights and specifically mentioned Lomachenko uh, while also calling out the likes of Teofimo Lopez. Uh, are either of those fights uh, interesting to you? Uh, and uh, we'll want to get your thoughts on Isak Cruz on, and potentially making fights with him. Well, you know, Cruz is a good fighter. You know, he, he's, he's he's rough and tough guy. Uh, he fights for another promoter. But again, uh, he appears to have a very, very good uh, fandom, a good following. Uh, a lot of the people uh, at the fight uh, on Saturday who came to the fight came specifically to see Cruz. That's what was reported. Uh, so, yeah, it would be interesting. He's certainly in the mix. Uh, he isn't anywhere as near as skill as either Shakur or uh, uh, Lomachenko or Tiafimo, but he has a, a, he fights, you know, like a Duran with guts and uh, and you can't, it's very hard uh, to discourage him. So he's a live opponent for any of those guys. So, yeah, we would love uh, uh, to uh, talk to Al Heyman uh, and use him uh, in our program. Uh, but again, that's down the road. Mm -hmm. And the best fighter at 140 pounds. You might want to say Teofimo Lopez, but I think the boxing public might want to say Devin Haney, a fighter that you worked with for several fights uh, last year and the year before that. Are you looking to bring back Devin Haney and re-sign him in order to make a lot more bigger fights with him, uh, with guys in your stable, considering Haney's a yeah, We're very fond of Devin. He's a terrific guy. His father get along great with his father. I mean, it's pretty significant that the gymnasium that he chooses to work in is the top ranked gym in Las Vegas. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, certainly look forward uh, to working with Devin in the future. Uh, and uh, I think Devin and Tiafimo down the road is a major, major fight. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, the Haney's are great to deal with. They're very cooperative in the promotion, uh, and they represent the best of what boxing can offer. They're really good, good people, uh, disciplined and nice and cooperative. So yeah, sure. We look forward in the future to work with, uh, Devin Haney. Mm -hmm. Your quick prediction on the fight, Haney and Garcia. April it's not even a fight. I mean, Garcia. I mean, I I don't want to say anything, but 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 Haney is a real fighter, and uh, you know I I don't look at Garcia as being very much. Uh, but again, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But you know, and he has a big following. Garcia does. He acts crazy uh, for whatever reason. But, you know, I'm an old school guy, and I think that uh, uh, Haney uh, is way too much for Ryan. That's what I think. And Lomachenko, he's now 36 years old and really hasn't done enough in the big ones of late. What are you looking to see from Lomachenko in this fight? And is the ideal next step for him to get this title to finally set up that fight with Shakur? Yeah, well... Loma is, uh, uh, is, I believe, still a great fighter. You know, his fight with Haney, uh, I was watching that fight. I like Devin. He's a great fighter. But I thought Loma won that fight. Uh, but again, the judges decided uh, otherwise, and you have to respect the judge's decision. Uh, has Loma slipped a little? Yeah, because people 
Uh, he, he's 36. He's not that really that old, but he had this long, long amateur career of almost 400 fights at the top level. Uh, so probably uh, he is not as good as he was maybe five years ago. Uh, he can't, George Cambosis is a is a live dog in the fight. Uh, he's a very good fighter. It's always very good shape. Uh, it's going to be a tough fight, uh, and we'll see who comes out on top. I mean, uh, I've loved uh, having uh, Loma as part of top rank. I have great affection for him. Uh, you know, I think he's a tremendous guy, great family, great father, you know, just everything you want in a fighter. Uh, but he's in very, very tough with Camboza, who can, uh, you know, he couldn't handle Devin Haney. Camboza couldn't, but he certainly uh, handled uh, Teofimo. Mm -hmm. So, again, and now he's fighting uh, in Australia again. Uh, so that's going to be a very, very interesting uh, match. And one of the Maloney kids is fighting for an interim title on that card. Uh, so it, I'm looking forward. I've never been to Perth. Been all over Australia, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. Never been to Perth. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Is the next step after that the ideal winner of that fight to face Shakur Stevenson? I know Shakur has a date sometime in the summer, but it's also trying to find him the right opponents. Is that the plan to bring Shakur that fight, the winner of that fight? Well, Shakur is is uh, fighting on July 6th uh, uh, in uh, uh, New Jersey uh, at, a, at the, the Prudential Center. Uh, we'll announce the opponent relatively shortly. And we've had a, a great run with Shakur, who's you know he's an incredible fighter with incredible skills. Uh, but our contract is over with the July six fight. Hopefully, we'll maintain uh, a relationship with Shakur uh, and uh, continue that. But he's a free agent after the July six fight. And so we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, for me, uh, to watch a uh, Lomachenko Shakur fight, because uh, I'm a boxing freak, I love boxing, would be such a treat uh, to see two skilled guys like that go at each other. Uh, so, again, but that's in the future. Loma has a tough fight with Camboza, and uh, uh, the opponent, uh, the guys tell me in, in the office that they've selected for Shakur is, 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 is a really good fighter. So, again, after July 6th, uh, we'll take a look and see uh, whether we can do a fight, a unification fight, which it will be. Uh, and, uh, but again, uh, Shakur uh, clearly will be a free agent uh, after the uh, July 6th uh, fight. But you, you have some very nice words to say about him the other day. You said anyone who faces him, who faces him is like sentencing him to death <laughs> when discussing the, the, a, poten a potential William Zapata fight. Uh, when Oscar De La Hoya made those call-outs. Uh, Stevenson appears to have reached a stage of his career where he really needs a significant opponent to rise to the occasion. Do, now that he's a free agent, do you think this is kind of that time where you make that happen? Well, I don't know. You know, we hope to continue promoting his fights, but he is a free agent, and that doesn't mean he's an enemy or anything like that. You know, and sports is a business. Uh, you know, one of my favorite football players uh, has been uh, Barkley, Sakon Barkley, who played for the Giants. Now he's playing for the Eagles. Uh, 
I can't fault him for that because he went where the opportunity was greater. And uh, uh, I, I really believe that Shakur has developed into one of the great, great fighters of our era. And I really believe that if you put him with somebody like Zapata, who's a good fighter, but not a great fighter, that it's a no contest. And what I resented was Oscar, uh, after the Zapata fight, maybe because of over-enthusiasm, calling out Shakur, when he had no intention, or was a painter, had no intention of fighting Shakur. And I don't bl blame Zapata because he knows that he can't beat Shakur. But moving on to the May 6th show uh, on the other side of the world, Naoya Inoue versus Luis Neri at the Tokyo Dome. I mean, that's a special occasion uh, if, if, it, if the fight's going to be taking place there. I, I know you're expecting over 50,000 fans. Uh, Bob, uh, I'm very curious, at this stage of Inoue's career, where would you rank him on all of the fighters you've ever promoted from a skills perspective? Where does he rank? You know, it's it's scary what, I've been, what I'm seeing. He so overwhelms his opponents, really good opponents, uh, that he's right, uh, I, that I've, I've never seen a fighter of that size uh, uh, perform uh, the way he has. Uh, you know, maybe uh, a Salvador Sanchez uh, had that ability, but even then, he, he, he didn't win all his fights by knockout. Uh, in a week, goes into these fights he boxes the guys and then knocks them out. You know, is it, it, with what we're seeing in Inoue is something really special. It's as special for boxing as Otani is for baseball. Another Japanese uh, athlete who is doing things in baseball that we've never seen before since Babe Ruth. So, uh, again... Inoue is really, really special. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, we are uh, delighted to have played a part, play, playing a part in his career. This fight on May 6th in the Tokyo Dome is the first one in 30 years, first boxing match since uh, Tyson and Douglas uh, to be in the Tokyo Dome. When they announced the fight, in Japan, the tickets sold out in one day. Uh, the you know the, the Japanese are not a very emotional kind of people, but they really uh, are emotional uh, for uh, in a way. Uh, and uh, uh, the Boxing Writers Association has voted him Fighter of the Year for last year, and uh, hopefully. They'll be able to make it to their dinner. Uh, and uh, so uh, when during the, and that's how we got involved during the pandemic, when they couldn't fight in Japan, uh, they brought him over to us because we were doing fights in the bubble. And so we got to know Inoue there, you know, in the United States. Uh, and he's a terrific, terrific young man uh, and, and, and one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I actually had the pleasure of calling Inoue's fight against Maloney on the international feed uh, for ESPN. That one got to see him up close and personal as well, too. Uh, but, you know, when we go when we talk about the Tokyo Dome, only special fights take place there. Inoue is the favorite. But Luis Neri is not going to be nowhere near the dog that Buster Douglas was. Do you? But in a way, he's also taking this fight personally because of the history Luis Neri has in the country and the uh, misfractions that he's had uh, in previous fights there. What's the mindset, do you think, of in a way for this one? And could we see a, an 
a, a different level of monster unleashed because of the fight's a little more personal for him. I mean, how could there be a different level of monster when we've seen the monster? Uh, you know, his fight uh, in this in December. Uh, uh, you know, he he boxes for a couple of rounds, and then when he is ready, he just takes the guy out. I mean, Neri is a tough, tough. Mexican fighter will give him a go for a few rounds and then in the wheel knock him out. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, it, I mean, people here in the United States who will be watching that fight on ESPN uh, plus, uh, you know, even though it takes place in the early hours of the morning, uh, 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 have a treat in store for them. Uh, because, uh, you know, it, 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 people live on the West Coast. They they get up in the morning and they put on ESPN Plus uh, and they can watch that fight from the beginning, you know, even though it's already taken place. So, again, and ESPN has told us that the audience for uh, an Inouye fight, even though it comes at a crazy hour, uh, is very, very large. So, you know, bo uh, boxing fans know they are watching something special when they watch Inouye. Mm -hmm. And you have the pieces to the puzzle to kind of keep Inouye progressing down the line. 126 pounds. Is that the plan after the Neri fight, regardless of the decision for him to move to 126? No, no, he's going to no, know that's not the plan. The plan is to keep him at 122 for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Then next year to make an assessment if they want him to go to 126. Mm -hmm. You know, the Japanese don't decide these issues on emotion the way Americans do uh, or tend to do. Japanese figure it out, they calculate, uh, and so I can't say even that he will go to 126. That decision won't be reached until early next year. Mm -hmm. Is really in good shape. Uh, and if Jared is in good shape, uh, there's very few heavyweights, if any, around that can beat him. Uh, you know, our plan is he's fighting a very tough guy, a, you know, a Belgian guy with a lot of experience. It's a it's a the right fight for Jared at this stage of his career, and uh, if he's successful uh, on Saturday next Saturday, uh, we hope to have him fight again uh, very quickly in the summer in Toledo, and then maybe again, probably again in the fall or winter. I mean, we're going to move him start starting now relatively quickly. My, my goal is uh, that if he continues on, uh, he'll be uh, getting ready uh, probably for 2026 fighting for a world title. Mm -hmm. I really believe that Jared has all the ingredients to be a champion. But again, you know, it's a long road and he's going to be tested and and uh, uh, we've always had high hopes for him. Mm -hmm. And I think the big thing with Jared is obviously kind of managing some of the uneven approach he has, right? He's openly admitted he his love and passion for boxing really isn't there. He wants to retire at the age of 27. I mean, we also saw he got into some trouble with the law recently with that high-speed chase with police. Uh, how do you plan to keep Jared engaged to uh, reach that uh, full potential that he has? Well, again, you know, he's, he's very charming and, and intelligent, very articulate. So I talk with him uh, as often as I can, whether it's at getting ready for his fights or coming as a spectator to other events that we do. Uh, he has... Uh, Antonio Leonard, uh, who uh, 
acts as our co-promoter, uh, who is with him constantly. Uh, James Prince uh, uh, reinforces that. He looks up to Prince. Uh, so we're all aware of the situation. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, he will start maturing enough uh, to understand what a great opportunity this is for him economically and uh, uh, continue on the path that he's been, uh, which, again, I believe will lead to a world championship uh, in the heavyweight division. Mm -hmm. And he's a big favorite to beat Riyad Mary, who's naturally a cruiserweight. And, you know, if he indeed wants to retire early, and, and we know boxing retirements, we can't take them seriously. But are you looking to put him on the fast track pretty soon to take on the likes of a Joseph Parker, a Joyce, a Jay Lee Zhang, or even a Deontay Wilder? Is that what is kind of the big plan for him in the That's next year or so? Next year. You're absolutely right. Those names... Not, I don't know necessarily the name you mentioned, but those type of names uh, he will be facing next year. 